Get to know your staff this week today and NFL predictions. All this and more in today's episode of the Cat's Eye News. Welcome to This Week Today. I'm Neil A.M. Thank you so much for joining us. Just time for a quick recap of the week, and it has been a busy one. Last Tuesday, the state of Missouri, best known for its state of misery, executed Marcellus Williams despite prosecutors' push to overturn the conviction. Williams' attorneys had filed many appeals based on what they said was new evidence, including alleged bias in jury selection and contamination of the murder weapon before the trial. Even the victim's family had asked that Williams not be executed. On Thursday, Oklahoma executed Emmanuel Littlejohn by lethal injection despite conflicting evidence regarding his guilt. Littlejohn was prosecuted by former Oklahoma County District Attorney Bob Macy, who secured 54 death sentences during his more than 20 years in office. The Republican governor of, the o of Oklahoma, Kevin Stitt, declined clemency, which refers to executive powers governors have that can be used to reduce a criminal sentence. Stitt was asked to give Littlejohn life in prison without the possibility of parole instead of death, but denied the appeal. Meanwhile, in the state of New York, New York City Mayor Eric Adams is the first mayor in U.S. history to face federal charges after being indicted for taking bribes and foreign campaign donations. The criminal indictment against him focuses on trips he took to Turkey, India, and Ghana on Turkish airlines, as well as campaign donations made by Turkish officials. More on this story as it unfolds. And now, as promised, a look at the vice presidential debate between Walls and Vance. Come on, show me the drama, the chair throwing, the insulting each other's mothers. First of all, Governor, I agree with you. Much of what the senator said right there, I'm in agreement with him on this. T Tim just said something that I agree with. And, and I, I'm going to thank Senator Vance. I think this is the conversation they want to hear. No! Why are you acting like civilized politicians and using the debate to foster open-mindedness, critical thinking, and effective communication skills? At least tell me they had a heated staring contest after the debate. Very civilized, very demure, very mindful. Anyway, on Tuesday, November 5th, the United States will either choose the first female and the first female person of color as its commander-in-chief, or it will be the second time in U.S. history that a president will win two non-consecutive elections. The last time was when Grover Cleveland served as the 22nd and the 24th president. Either way, if you can vote, vote. It's important you vote. Register to vote and vote early by mail if you choose but vote. In closing, a tribute to Dame Maggie Smith. The world lost a true gem last week. The world full of babbling, bumbling band of baboons. That's this week today for today. I'll see you next week. Good day. Hey Novi, are you interested in coding, math, or data modeling? Then join AMCC, our school's premier AI coding and math modeling club after school today in room 261. AMCC hosts guest speakers from the University of Michigan organizes hackathons, and offers unique competition opportunities. Members can choose to dive into coding or learn about modeling data. Whether you're a beginner or experienced, if you're passionate about tech or math, this is the club for you. See you there, Nova. Hello, this is Neil. The Novi High School Theater is back with the first show of the year. The fall play this year is Take Two, an evening made up of eight comedy short plays. Taking place in the Black Box Theater on October 10th, 11th, and 12th at 7 p.m., the show features stories of chimps typing into infinity, a Philadelphia cheesesteak, and a repairman falling in love with the washing machine. You can buy tickets by scanning the QR code on posters seen throughout the school. We're also selling tickets at the door. Hope to see you there. Good day. 
What's going on, Wildcats? My name is Yasin, and me and my fellow sports broadcasting crew members are going to give you the recap for what happened this week with Novi Sports. Starting off last Friday, Novi Varsity Football took on the Salem Rocks for our annual homecoming game, and due to some late-game heroics by Johnny and Jaden connecting for a touchdown late in the fourth quarter to give the Wildcats a lead, and a game-sealing interception by Emilio Acosta, the Novi Wildcats were able to come out with a victory. On Monday, the Novi Boys Varsity Tennis Team took on Bloomfield, where they came up a little bit short. Also, Novi Girls Varsity Field Hockey Team took on St. Catharines, where they won 8 0 in a mercy. On Tuesday, Novi Varsity Volleyball played against Plymouth, winning 3 0. And Boys Varsity Soccer took on Heartland, tying 1 1. And on Thursday, Novi Varsity Soccer played against Plymouth, where unfortunately they came up short. Also, tonight at 7, Novi Varsity Football takes on Plymouth at Plymouth, and the theme is White Out slash White Lies, so be there and be ready to cheer on your Novi Wildcats. And on Saturday and Sunday, Novi Varsity Swim and Dive will have their Oakland County Championship, and Varsity Cross Country will have their Oakland County Championship. Novi Varsity Volleyball has an invitational against Mercy, and Novi Varsity Field Hockey will be playing against Dexter. And finally, Novi Boys Varsity Tennis will be having their KLA Conference matches. Hello, this is Melissa, and today I'm with Miss Alcorn. Hello, Miss Alcorn. What's your role in NHS? I'm a math teacher. I teach pre algebra and algebra one. And what's your unpopular opinion? Crumble cookie is not that good. Hi, I'm Vanessa, and I'm here with Mr. Ziegler. And what do you teach here at Nova High School? I teach AP Lang and AP Research. And what is an unpopular opinion you have? Uh, chocolate chip cookie dough is an elite level dessert, but you ruin it when you put chocolate chips in it. I completely disagree. Salutations, Wildcats. Welcome to Today in History, a new segment where I talk about things that have happened on this very day in history. And today on Today in History, we'll be talking about why we're even experiencing Today in History. So in other words, we'll be talking about the birth of the Gregorian calendar. So back in the olden days, on October 4th, 1582, Pope Gregory XIII decided that there had to be a civil calendar change. While I'm sure many of you already know the Earth takes around 365.25 days to revolve around the Sun, which is why we have leap years, this number is closer to 365.2422 days. And that difference meant almost nothing if it did not regress one day every single century from the calendar's seasonal dates. And now I'm here to give more context about the Gregorian calendar and how exactly it became our civil calendar and also why the Pope wanted to change it to what it is now. So first off, the Pope wanted to change it because originally the vernal equinoxes were on Easter, but given that the Julian calendar was really inaccurate, the Pope met with astronomers and mathematicians to discuss how they could bring it back to be on Easter. And also, the Gregorian calendar was not immediately accepted by every single country in the world, unfortunately. It was immediately accepted by most of Catholic Europe because the Pope told them to accept it. However, other countries like England accepted it in the 1700s and later on. In fact, in England when they accepted it, protesters flooded the streets yelling, give us our 11 days back. So they were really mad about it. Other countries like China accepted it in 1913 and the Soviet Union, which is now Russia, accepted it in 1918. And that's all for today, Wildcats. I hope you stay tuned for next week in history. I'm Lavanya, and I'll be signing off. What's up, Novi? We are back with our next NFL Sunday prediction. First game is the Jets at the Vikings. The Jets just took a huge loss to the Broncos, and the Vikings have been rolling recently. They're one of the best teams in the league. Just beat the Packers at home. Give me the Vikings. I want to see an upset this week, so I'm going to take the Jets. I find it very hard to believe that the Vikings are going to have a 5-0 start. Give me the Jets in an upset in this one. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to have a good game. Next game is the Bills at the Texans, and the Texans have been looking really mid lately. Uh, I think C.J. Stroud has hit his sophomore slump, and the Bills are trying to bounce back after that loss to the Ravens. Give me the Bills. 
Uh, I'm going to take the Bills too, even though that tough loss against the Ravens. I still think they can bounce back and win against the Texans. Yeah, the Bills got smacked by the Ravens on last Sunday night. Uh, give me the Texans in this one. Next, we got the Ravens at Bengals, and the Ravens are finally at 2-2, two and two, and they looked amazing against the Bills. Give me the Ravens. Derrick Henry went crazy against the Bills, and the Bengals' run defense is really bad right now, so I'm going to take the Ravens. Yeah, the Bengals have really struggled to start the year. Uh, the Ravens just smacked the Bills. Bills. Uh, give me Derrick Henry and Lamar to have a big game on the ground. Give me the Ravens. Next we got the Packers at the Rams and the Packers are my team. I'm not going to pick against them. Jordan Love is looking really rusty, especially in that loss to Minnesota. He's throwing off his back foot. I still think they're going to mercy the Rams. Give me the Packers. Rams have been playing really bad lately and even though I don't like the Packers, I'll take the Packers. Yeah, the Rams have been struggling. I, I think that Jordan Love's going to have a bounce back game coming off that injury. I think he's going to finally be healthy. Give me the Packers. Next is Cowboys at Steelers, and the Cowboys have not been performing to my expectations. I think it's going to be a close game, but I'm still going to go with the Steelers. Justin Field looks really good right now. They lost, unfortunately, but I think the Steelers can win this. Yeah, the key to this game is going to be the Steelers defense. They kind of struggled against the Colts a little bit, but at home on Sunday night, give me the Steelers. Our last game is the Saints at the Chiefs. The Chiefs will lose eventually, but it will not be to the Saints. This will be a good game, but give me the Chiefs at Arrowhead. I mean, the refs won't let the Chiefs lose, so the Chiefs. Yeah, I just think that Patrick Mahomes just keeps finding ways to win, and the Chiefs just keep finding ways to win. It doesn't matter how many receivers they lose. Uh, give me the Chiefs to go to 5-0. and That concludes this week's NFL Sunday prediction. Stay tuned for next week. What's up, Wildcats? Do you want your story featured on the Cat's Eye News? Email us at nhscatseyenews at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, Novi. Hope you had a great fire drill. Stay safe.